Amen. Amen. Thank God for those of you who are sowing seed into good ground. Amen. The upper room is good ground. And we all know that when you sow good seed into good ground, you get good harvest. So we are thankful. Thank you so for allowing us to honor God's plan for this house to do and to be excellent in ministry. Thank you for allowing us to help and to, to be a blessing, to be God's hands and his feet to those who, who are less fortunate, who need assistance. Um, we're sowing and we're, God is allowing us to, to do great work alongside others who are assisting those who are homeless in our area. Um, and you may not think you can help with that, but your, your tithe, your offering, allow us to, to go there and to, to minister life to those who, who need it the most. You need to understand, you, your situation may not be the best, but there are people who would love to be in yours, who would love to trade their situation for yours. So I thank you, Upper Room. Thank you, Upper Room family, for sowing uh, your seed, for allowing this house to be uh, the, the, the voice, the hands, the feet of Christ to somebody who needs to see. My prayer is always that, God, you go before us so that when people look in our direction, they see you before they see us. My prayer is that God is doing that uh, in a supernatural and a tangible way with what this ministry does locally and abroad. To all of you who are joining us, we thank you again for being a part of this this, this virtual worship, wherever you are at home or in your car, we thank you for, for just being a part. If you haven't already, invite a friend, invite a neighbor, let them know that the upper room is online right now. There is a word from the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm excited to, to share this with you. And again, I apologize for the last few weeks, uh, God has been holding his word close to the vest, and I, I, you, you've, if you've ever heard me before, I, I say, God, sometimes you play too much because he waits till it seems like the last minute to put the final pieces in place. But I, I, tr I trust God and, and that, that what he has to say is both relevant and relative to our situation and our present circumstance. God, I believe God does not believe in in. in, in, in in canned messages. He believes in fresh word, fresh bread. And I, I remember asking God, this may, this may help some preachers out there. I remember asking God, God, why, why you, it seems like you wait till the last minute? He'll give me bits and pieces here and I'll, 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 I'll exhaust those. And it seems like there's just pieces that are not yet together. And he said plainly to me, I don't want your fingerprints on this. Because sometimes we get it too early. We'll put our fingerprints and we want to tweak it and, 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 and just kind of make it fit us. <laughs> kind of like some of you brothers who know what I'm talking about. You've got your, your line, your shape up just right, but you want to try this one more thing. And then that one more thing turns into a mistake. And God, he said to me, he said, I don't want you to put your hands on this because too many, too many of your fingerprints make it to cease to look like me. So I'm trust, I thank God. When we, when we share, many times, I'm going to give you a secret, many times when we, when we come before you, I'm still, I'm still listening to what God wants to say. Because I believe just in the same scenario that that woman with the issue of blood was in the crowd with Jesus, who was saying, if I may but touch, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, when she did touch him, he, Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? You, those of you who know the story, he was, the Bible says it was strong. King James, he was thronged around. People, everybody was touching him. It was a crowded situation. There was no social distancing in that moment. People were touching each other. And he says, he had the, he had the audacity to say, to ask the question, who touched me? Well, there were, the disciples were confused because everybody was touching him. But he meant, who came to me on purpose? Who came to me with a need and trusted, the, and trusted me so much to believe that, that the need was found in me? And in that moment, she got her healing. 
I believe that, that in the moment, God understands whoever comes to him and seeks him. I'm, t- I'm preaching already. That, that God has that word especially for your situation, whatever it is that you come to touch him with, whatever it is that you need to touch him with, he has the answer right there. And I believe he, reserve, he reserves uh, uh, the finishing, what I, what, I, what I call the finishing details of a message. He reserves it for that one, that mother, that father, that son, that daughter who's coming to touch him. And in that moment, he, he reserves the space. He gives, I call it the buffer, so that, when you work up the faith, <clears throat> how I feel that, to touch him, whether it is your, whether you're sitting uh, in, in, in worship or you're watching us, God reserves, he puts enough buffer between the vessel and the, the source, him, to then pour in what that person who touched him needs. Even if the vessel didn't prepare, even if the vessel didn't make ready for it. And so I'm believing that God will have an answer for you. I'm believing that God is going to speak a word through these lips of clay that I, I probably didn't even prepare for. Sometimes if you've been listening to this ministry, been following this ministry for any length of time, you'll hear me say, okay, Holy Spirit, that's, a, that's an immediate download. Because I am sensitive, I do my best to be sensitive to the voice of God because I understand there's somebody out there, there's somebody out there who's trying to touch him. God knows it. He creates that buffer so that you can get exactly what you need from him. From him. Let's do our Bible affirmation found on our inserts. It's, it's, if you were here, it'd be on your insert. It's on the screen, our Bible affirmation. It goes like this. Say it with me. Ready? Read. This is my Bible. It is the infallible, incorruptible, unstoppable, immutable word of God. It holds my peace, my victory, my breakthrough. This is my spiritual roadmap. This is my Bible. You believe that? Give God a shout. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to look in the Word of God. And I apologize to my, to my IT crew. Uh, God was speaking, fresh download, and I, I prepared to give all my, my notes and my PowerPoints to you, but I did not, so it's going to look a little naked today. But we're going to come from Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, and we're going to do some reading beginning with verse 10. Daniel chapter 6, beginning with verse 10. And as we look at Daniel chapter 6, I want to pray, Father God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Speak life. Speak hope. Speak comfort to somebody's heart right now. Minister through these lips of clay, think through this mind, that your glory might be revealed, that your children might be fed, that the kingdom of God might be advanced. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Daniel chapter 6, beginning with verse 10, it says, when Daniel learned that the decree had been signed and posted, he continued to pray just that he just as he had always done. I'm reading from the message version. It says, his house had windows in the upstairs that opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he knelt there in prayer, thanking and praising his God. The the conspirators came and found him praying, asking God for help. He went straight to the king and reminded him of the They went straight to the king and reminded him of the royal decree that he had signed. Did you not, they say, sign a decree forbidding anyone to pray to any God or man except for the next 30 days, except you for the next 30 days? And anyone caught doing it would be thrown into the lion's den. Absolutely, said the king. Written in stone like all the laws of the Medes and Persians. Then they said, Daniel, one of the Jewish exiles, ignores you, O king, and defies your decree. They snitch him. 
three times a day he prays. The king, verse 16, verse 16 to 17, the king caved in and ordered Daniel brought and thrown into the lion's den. But he said to Daniel, your God to whom you are so loyal is going to get you out of this. A stone slab was placed over the opening of the den. The king sealed the sealed the cover with his signet ring and the signet rings of all his nobles fixing Daniel's fate. Verse 19. At daybreak, the king got up and hurried to the, to the lion's den. As he approached the den, he called out anxiously, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve so loyally saved you from the lions? O king, live forever, said Daniel. My God sent his angel who closed the mouths of the lions so that they would not hurt me. I've been found innocent before God and also before you, O king. I've done nothing to harm you. Verse 23. When the, when the king heard these words, he was happy. He ordered Daniel taken out of the den. When he was hauled up, there wasn't a scratch on him. He had trusted his God. When the king commanded that the conspirators who had informed on Daniel those snitches, be thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. Before they hit the floor, the lions had them in their jaws, tearing them to pieces. Verse 25, King Darius published this proclamation to, the, to, the, to every race, color, and creed on earth. Peace to you, abundant peace. I decree that Daniel's God shall be worshipped and feared in all parts of my kingdom. He is the living God. World without end, his kingdom never fails. His rule continues eternally. He is savior and rescuer. He performs astonishing miracles in heaven and on earth. He saved Daniel from the power of the lions. From, the, from then on, Daniel was treated well during the reign of Darius and also in the following reign of Cyrus the Persian. Now, verse 28 of the King James Version says it like this, and that'll be uh, our reading. He says, so this Daniel, I like that. This Daniel, if you're taking notes, so this Daniel, not to be confused with any other Daniel, this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. We want to consider for a thought this morning. My focus is my freedom. My focus is my freedom. Hallelujah. Right off the rip, I want to just say this. Never underestimate the power of focus and intentionality. Never underestimate the power of focus and intentionality. Focus and intentionality keep lines from getting blurred. They, they reduce the complication, the complication of relationship statuses. And they help to expose lies for exactly what they are, lies. Never underestimate the power of focus and intentionality. When focus and intentionality are engaged, there is very little room for childish, idiotic distractions. Let that marinate for a minute. When, when focus and intentionality are engaged, there is very little room for childish, idiotic distractions. Let that marinate for a minute. When you are focused and engaged, the, the opportunity to allow uh, uh, the distractions of childish and foolishness, they're, they're very limited. They're very limited. I don't know about you, but there are times uh, I get uh, uh, silly people give me a rash. <laughs> they, they, when, when you, you, you consent, you persist. That's why I can't watch some, some shows. I, 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 I grew up watching Three's Company. I can't watch Three's Company no more because some of the stuff that they – that the, that the whole show is based on could be dealt with with a simple conversation. The whole show is based on miscommunication, and I just I just don't have I don't have the, I don't have I don't I, I'm not built for that anymore. That when when you are engaged, when you are engaged, when your focus and intentionality are locked in, you have very little room for anything else. The Word of God declares it like this: the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. It, it, what that really means, fully engaged and intentionality help prevent the spoilage of the, of the eternal things that God has given us. When you are fully focused and intentional, 
especially in the, where, where, where purpose is involved, especially in the places where you know that you have been called to, then the, it prevents the spoilage of, the, of those things that are eternal that come from God. You, you might lose some stuff. You might, have be, you might get pruned in some areas, but those things that are eternal, those things that, 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 that will make and determine the difference in eternity, they remain, they are solid, they are fixed, they will not be moved. Focus and intentionality prevent the spoilage of those things. Hallelujah. The, the, the situation, the circumstance, or the, con- the conditions and the climate around the moment won't even change focus and intentionality. H- how can, here's a question, how can the God of time and space be governed and limited by his own creation? And before some of my super spiritual folks, my spiritual wonders get a brain cramp, let me, let me, let me, answer, let me answer this question for you. He can't. He can't be limited by his own creation. So, so, so focus and intentionality help get us on the same page that God is on. When you're locked, if you're fixed, if you're fixed, he says, he will keep you in perfect peace. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Whose mind is stayed, focused, fixed, intentional on him. He, God, will keep us in perfect peace. Now, that didn't say that the things around us were peaceful. He says he will keep us in perfect or maturing peace, peace that produces fruit. Oh, that's good. That's good. Peace that that produces, that produces something eternal. He said he will, God will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed, fixed, fixed and intentional on him. That means, you, you, uh, uh, like horses, you have the blinders on. They, 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 put, they put blinders on horses to keep them focused, to keep them moving, to keep them pulling what they have been tasked to pull to the destination they have been, they, that they've been assigned to go to. And, and when your heart, when you, when you are in perfect peace, he will keep you in perfect peace whose heart is, 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 is stayed on him. He puts blinders on you. He, he says, I won't allow your, your heart to be pulled in any other direction than the direction that I'm taking you. I won't, let, I won't let pandemics pull you away. I won't let economic situations pull you away. I won't let, I won't let relational statuses pull you away. Whose mind is stayed, fixed, and intentional on him. That's good. That's good. He, he does that. He does that because he understands, he knows the way you should take. And he knows the devil's strategy. Oh, I'm, t- I'm, I'm teaching up in here right now. The devil's strategy is through distraction. <clears throat> My God. He doesn't have anything stronger than God, but if he can distract, you, if he can get you to take your focus off of God just for a moment, the Bible says neither give place to the devil. How does the place come through distraction? How does the place, when it says neither give place to the devil, that place is neither give opportunity, neither give, a, give, give him an, a, a foothold, neither give him a place at the table. What does that come through? It comes through distraction. But if your, if your mind, if your heart is fixed on God in the middle of everything that's going on around you, if you're able to focus in the midst of a fiery trial, then, then you will come out of it. Ah, oh God, you will come out of it looking like God intended you to look. Look, you'll come out of it smelling like with the fragrance of heaven because God says he will keep you in perfect peace. The word keep means preserve. He will preserve you in perfect peace. He will, he, will, he will cause it so that you won't look like what you've been through. My God. <laughs> he will cause it to where you, we, they, they saw what you went through. 
but they can't find evidence of it. They can't find evidence that you've been through it because God kept you. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but God is keeping you. Some of you can testify this morning that God has kept you. The only reason you're still sucking wind like right now is because God has kept you. He has sustained you. And the Bible says he will keep you in perfect, maturing peace, fruit-bearing peace. Your mind's got to be stayed on it. Whose mind is fixed and intentional <clears throat> on him. The text, the text, the text. Hallelujah. The text, in, in, in this text, Daniel 6, <clears throat> Daniel is a prisoner of war. He is, his, his, his country has been overtaken. They've been overrun. And Israel had got in the habit of this. They repent. They be rescued. They fall away. They get captured. They repent. The cycle. The cycle. <laughs> Sin, repent, release. Sin, repent, release. Sin, repent, release. They were in this cycle of sinning, repenting, and being released. And this was just another, this was just another spin cycle of, of where Israel was. And, and Daniel is, is a prisoner. He's a prisoner, but he's prospering. He's a prisoner, but he's prospering. Daniel, he's, he's technically a casualty of war, yet he's, 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 he's top of his class in a foreign government. Yeah, he's supposed to be a prisoner, but he's calling the shots. He's, he's, he's held captive, but he's holding command over others native to the land. He's now confined to. He's supposed to be a captive. He was taken against his will to a foreign land. But while in that land, God, God allows him to prosper. While in that land, while under captivity, while under foreign rule, he's allowed to flourish and thrive. What, what, God's favor on our lives in whatever climate or condition cannot be ignored or denied. Let that marinate for a minute. It, what, what, what I'm really saying is it doesn't matter what the situation is. When God's blessing is on your life, favor ain't fair. It doesn't matter what the condition of the problem is. It doesn't matter that, that, that they cut the hours. God will allow what you do have to stretch and meet every need that you have. I remember, I remember not having, not having enough money to put gas in my car in the middle of the month. <laughs> and, and, and my gas tank, my gas tank, the signal was on red in the middle of the month. And, 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 and it, I, had, I had at least 14 more days before my next pay period. And in the middle of the month, my, my, my gas hand was, was right, was right, it hadn't touched red yet. And I drove like that for the next 10 days. For the next 10 days with my gas hand just right, just teetering above the red. The last four days, it fell below the red. <laughs> and, 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 and up until payday, I couldn't go to the gas station. I wanted to pull in, but I knew if I pulled in, I'd just be wasting time. But when payday came, ha, I pulled into the gas station, and my, my gas hand was, was below red. The, the hand was below red. It was hanging off the meter. It was so low. When I opened up the gas can, the, you heard so much air. <laughs> because he kept me. The favor of God. It doesn't matter what condition that you're in. It doesn't matter the climate or the situation. The favor of God on your life, whether you're captive, whether you're, you're being bound, it doesn't, when God's favor is on your life, it cannot be ignored. It cannot be denied. Even the people who don't want to bless you, they can't help but bless you when God's favor is on your life. And Daniel, Daniel, Daniel was this kind of dude. He was in, he was in, in, in a prisoner, but he was prospering. He was a prisoner and he was prospering. Verse, verse 4, it says that when, when, these, when these haters, these haters, and, and then you got to understand, when favor when favor's on your life, there's some people who, 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 who fight you because of the favor. There's some people who, 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 will, who will attack you because of the anointing. And, and they were there. They were, they were native to the land, but they still didn't have it like, like, like Daniel. 
And in verse 4, they, they, they decided to trick him, and they couldn't find anything. About, King James says that they couldn't find anything wrong with his work. They couldn't, he had an excellent spirit. I wish if, I, if that was my assignment, I'd work that, I worked that this morning, but that's not my assignment. He had an excellent spirit, and that excellent spirit got on the nerves of those who did not. Don't, 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 don't change. Don't come down. Don't come down. Don't lower your standards because everybody else around you wants you to. His excellent spirit g- got the attention of those who, who were not excellent. Hallelujah. And in verse 4, it, the Bible says, it says that they, they conspired against him. They tried to look for, they, we, couldn't, we can't find nothing wrong with his work. Let's find something wrong with his worship. <sighs> when people see our faithfulness to God as a flaw or weakness to expose, we see the heart of that individual firsthand. When you get, what does that look like? What does it look like, Pastor? When you got people telling you that your worship don't take all that, that it don't take all that for you to worship, you're seeing the hand, you're seeing the heart of that person firsthand. When they, when they can't find nothing wrong with, with how you do what you do except when you worship, take note. Take note. Take note. They're not just speaking. That's, that they're, they're being influenced by something other, by something other than themselves. Who, who would, who would, who would want to, who, who would, oh God, who would challenge you in your own personal worship? Why would my worship bother you? Let it marinate for a minute. Let it marinate. You do you. Let me do me. These, these, these four, these, 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 these haters. They found, they found, they said, we can only, the only loophole we can find, the only weakness we can find or expose in Daniel would be the way he worshiped. And so they tricked the king. You read the text. We read the text. They tricked the king. King makes his decree for 30 days. No one should honor or, 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 or worship any other god but the king. Wrong move. And so he's, he, has to, he has to follow through with his, with his, with his edict, with his decree. And, and in, in that he, 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 he puts Daniel in a precarious situation. Now, now in, my final, in my, my final closing moments, I want to I center on Daniel's focus. I want to center on Daniel's focus. Daniel is focused in three areas to, of the text. He's focused in three areas of the text. Uh, now, the first area, he's, I'm going to give you all three, and then we're going to walk them down. He's focused in, 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 in relocation, not defeat. He's focused in relocation, not defeat. Number two, he's focused in devotion, not the decree. And number three, he's focused in the promised deliverer from the den, not the probable danger in the den. I'll go over it again. I'll go over it again. See, he's number one, he's focused in relocation, not defeat. When he was taken captive and taken back to the Persians, back, back to Babylon, Daniel didn't get caught up in the fact that they had gotten defeated. Now, some of us, when we, when we go through a seeming defeat, when we go through a time where it looks like we're lost, we get so caught up in the loss, we no longer live. When it looks like we've gone through, when we go through a bad patch or a bad situation or a bad stretch, we're so consumed with, with, with how bad it was, we forget to look around to see where, 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 where we can do and be better. Daniel wasn't, he wasn't focused on the defeat. He was focused on the relocation. He said, okay, I'm here. I'm here. How can, how can I continue, how can I continue to be the one, how can I continue to magnify what my name means? Daniel's name meant God is my judge. And when, even though he was, he was in a foreign place, he, he, he made up his mind, he was more focused on how can God be my judge on foreign ground? How can God be my judge in a position and a place I've never known before? Oh, my God. How can God be my judge in a place I didn't want to be, but I'm here today? He, he wasn't focused on the defeat. He was focused on the fact that I'm relocated. Now, how can, how can I now populate God's spirit in the place of my relocation? You may, you may have been demoted. You may have had to take a lesser job and lesser pay. You may have had to uh, readjust some things. But instead of, instead of lamenting on what you lost, look around and say, God, how can you be glorified? right here. 
God, how can you get how can you get the glory right here? How how can I make your name famous in this situation? How, how see and God loves people who 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 see possibilities above their problems. He loves those who see who see an opportunity above the opposition. And Daniel was more focused on re, on the relocation than the defeat. That's number one. Number two, he was focused more on the devotion, his devotion instead of his decree. After they made the decree, after the king made the decree. These, these, cons- these conspirators and these co-conspirators said, we got it. We got it. You would think that, you would think that, they, that Daniel, after hearing the decree, would make, would make strategic and, and profound changes in his, in, his, in his lifestyle. But he didn't. The Bible says that the same way he went to his room and opened up the door facing Jerusalem, and, 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 and bowed down and prayed to God the same way he had been doing it from day one. He, he did not let the decree change his devotion. Ha, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. You let the, you let, you let the decree of COVID-19 change how you have, have you, how you entered before God. You let, you let the, the eco- economic situation change how you have been devoted to God. You let the fact that you've seen people and loved ones you know get sick and even some of them have passed away. But you let those things de- de- determine how you, de- how you are, give your worship to God. But you you can't let the situations around you change who God is to you. He said, okay. I could just, I could just hear Daniel. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, coin, to coin the phrase of some of my, some of my Trinidadian people, uh-huh, okay. Uh-huh, okay. I love, I love my, I love my Trinidadian, my Trinidadian brothers and sisters. I, yeah, yeah, y'all just so easy, y'all easy like Sunday morning. You, you say, uh huh, okay. And I can just hear Daniel. I can hear Daniel. Uh huh, okay. Some of you need to adopt that right now. When you hear the devil say bragging and as my grandmother say, selling wolf tickets about what he's gonna do and what he's getting ready to do. You say, uh huh, okay. What you're saying is, devil, I hear what you're saying, but I ain't listening to you. Because I've heard what, I, I'm listening to what my God has told me. And nothing you say, devil, is going to change or divert my devotion to God. Daniel said, uh-huh, I hear you. Yeah, okay. But he didn't let, he didn't let the decree change his focus on his devotion. He kept praying to God. He kept seeking God's face. He kept, some of you right now, you're taking on the problem. Instead of casting it on him, you, and I, I'm, how can I know that? Because I, I started doing that. I started taking on the problem. When, 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 we, when we went through the time of being released, when we went through a foreclosure, I took on the problem. And God said, it don't, it don't fit your hands. It don't fit your hands. And, and what, I, what, I, what I failed to recognize, me taking on the problem, it, 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 hindered, my, it hindered my ability to stay devoted to God. And so I was so full of the problem, I emptied myself of my devotion to God. And, and it, br- it brought separation, momentarily separation between me and God. And I didn't know how to act because I was out of connection with him. Some of you right now, your, your life is spinning out of control because you've taken on the problem. And you, 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 you've demoted, you've demoted and, and, and distanced yourself from the, the, the devotion that belongs to God. You devote more time to the problem and less to God. Be like Daniel. Daniel said, I hear the decree, but, but I'm listening for God. I hear the decree, but I'm listening for God. I hear the problem, but I'm listening for the problem solver. He says, uh-huh, okay, I hear you, but God's still God. I hear you, but I'm still honoring my Savior. He, he was focused. He was focused in devotion not the decree. Number three, he was focused in the promised deliverer from the den, not the probable danger in the den. When the king finally had to honor his word and put Daniel in the lion's den, the typical, the typical, the typical scenario was and the, moment, the moment that person fell into the den, the lions began to eat king sealed it, saying that it was the decree. He sealed it, and he went away. And he and the lions had the same 
predicament that night. He didn't eat, and the lions didn't eat. <laughs> you missed that. The Bible says that the king, he didn't eat. He didn't want to be disturbed. He fasted. He was lamenting. He fasted. And not only did the king not eat, but the lions didn't eat either Cause, because of Daniel's focus. Daniel was focused on the promised re- deliverer and not the probable danger. He was more focused on who was able to get him out and not the problem that he was now in. Some of you, you're so focused on what you're in, you've taken your eyes off of who can get you out of it. You're more focused on what's around you, and you're not, and you become less focused on who's above you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I need you to tell this, I need you to understand this. Focus gives life to whatever it's fixed on. Focus gives life to whatever it's fixed on. And if you can't l- allow me in the, next, in the next four to five minutes to just paint this picture, here's how I saw it. Here's the movie that was playing in my head. Daniel drops, he's dropped into the lion's den. And Daniel doesn't panic. He doesn't panic. Because what good, what will panic do when what you've, when, when what you've done was only honor God. What will panic do when honoring God was all that you did? To panic means that you're second guessing now your obedience. To panic, and I understand. I understand that we're human. We're human, and and I'll, I, I, I'll, I'll let you. Let me. Let me. Let me. I'll, I'll let you do that. You you may panic for the moment, but don't live panicked. The initial shock may 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 shake you. But, let, but, but let, let, let the Spirit of God settle you. Here he is. Here he is. He's there. They seal the den. And there's a picture. And, and I, wish, I wish I had had, had all my, my graphics together because there's a picture. There's this famous picture of, of, of this artist's rendition of Daniel. And he's, he's standing with his, with his hands uh, uh, in front of him. And he's looking up, and there's this ray of light coming. I wish I could show it to you. I wish, I, I wish in this moment you could see it, and this ray of light is coming to him. And the, the lions are there. They're present. They're visible. But they're not attacking. They're present. They're there. They're not attacking. And I, it was there. It, the, the impetus for, for, for this, this message right here came from, from that picture because he's, he's looking up. He's not looking at the lions. He's looking at the light. He's not focused on, on, on the danger. He's focused on the deliverer. And in that moment, I got the revelation. Too many of us, we focus on, on what's around us and what could happen. And, and even in some cases, what's supposed to happen. But my God shall do exceeding abundantly above all we can ever ask, think, or imagine. And if you focus on, on, on him he has the ability to, to, to suspend what should have happened, what was likely to happen because of your focus. What you focus on, you give life to. He gave life an opportunity for God to come in and move. Now, I, 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 he's, when, when King Darius comes and and. and in the morning, he, he couldn't sleep. He comes early in the morning, and he, he calls out, laments to, to Daniel as if he's dead because he wasn't confident that Daniel was alive. But then Daniel replies back to him, oh, king, lift da- da- Daniel, he sounded like he might have had a little Trinidadian in him. Oh, king, live forever. He said, the God that I serve, he did indeed deliver me. He sent an angel, and he kept they closed the mouths of the lions. Now he says he sent an angel. I don't want to get I don't want to get mixed up in that. Uh, that's not my assignment to get there. But he sent one angel, and the one angel shut all the mouths. He sent an angel, and he shut the mouths of the of the lions. Now, now look at that. He he shut he shut their mouth. He didn't take their nature. Hmm, this is good. He shut their mouths, but he didn't take their nature. And, and if you ever looked at, at cats, cats, felines, they, they like to play with their food before they eat it. 
What's important about that? He didn't have a scratch, scratch on him. Even if they couldn't have eaten him, they could have played with him. They could have pawed him to death. But they didn't. God, when, when God's favor is on your life and your focus is fixed on him, he will, he will suspend, he will suspend natural circumstances. What should have happened won't happen. I remember driving from college one day. I was driving home one, one evening from college, and I was bone tired. I had worked all day, and I was tired. And, and I, the last thing I remember was driving through a place called um, uh, Smackovers, driving through a, a small town. The last thing I remember, they, were, they, they had wells, they had uh, uh, oil wells, and there was an oil well that was, that was on fire. It was, it was letting out some oil. It was on fire. The last thing I remember was, was, was seeing the oil well, the oil derrick uh, on fire. That's the last thing I remember, and I woke up. When I, when I came to, when I realized where I was, I was sitting in front of my house 45 miles away. The last thing I remember was seeing that, that Derek in, in 43 miles from home. And then I woke up with my car still in drive in front of my driveway. The hand of God. God will suspend natural occurrences when your focus is, is stayed on him, when your focus is fixed on him. I'm talking to somebody right now. You're about, you, you, the devil's got you freaking out over all this stuff that could be. We don't even know. We don't know what this, what this, what this, this virus or what this pandemic really entails. And so there's speculation everywhere. And you, you're taking the what ifs and, and the what could be's and you're, going, you're, you're losing your mind. But what you, what you fail to recognize is what you know about God. When I don't know what's going on around me, I know the God that's in me. And he's able to keep me from falling. Quit focusing on what you don't know and focus on who you do know. He'll keep you. He'll hold you. Your focus is your freedom. Your focus is your freedom. I don't know what what this pandemic, I don't know how, 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 how drastically this pandemic is going to change the, 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 the way of life for us going forward, but I know the way of life going forward is going to change. I don't know to the degree, but you, and, but you know what? I ain't worried about it because my focus is fixed on him, the one who created space and time. He's not governed by space or time. He created, he stands outside of time which means he's not affected by what happens here. And if I trust him, if we trust him, he will keep us from falling. There's some things that may, that may, that may, may, we may not be able to take with us going forward. But understand, anything that's not eternal is not guaranteed. Only those things that are eternal are guaranteed. Could God be streamlining you? Could God be pruning you, cutting back some stuff that, have kept, that has kept you from fully flowing and following him? Could it? Could he be, could he be positioning you to, to, to reduce some, some weight? The Bible says lay aside the weight and the sin that so, be, so that easily beset you. That beset me, slow you down, make you sluggish. Could, could, he, could he be putting you in a position, say, say I, need you, I need to trim some stuff off of you? Your focus, that's where your freedom is. Whatever you give life, whatever you focus on, you give life to. Follow the example of Daniel. He was put, he was put, he was, that was, it's not figurative. He was in the den. He was in the trouble. The trouble was there. We're not acting like it, like it wasn't there. We're not trying to be super spiritual and say it didn't happen. It happened. But even in the midst of it, even in the midst of it, he kept his focus on God. I'm not asking you to be so super spiritual that you, you don't see what's happening around you. But I am asking you to, to put priority on him and less on that. I am asking you, you can see it, but not let it affect you. You can see it, but not let, but not let it change your focus. Your focus is your power. The 
focus is your power. Just very recently, Dante, you can come play my Academy of War music. We're getting ready to go. Recently, I end with this. God gave me the release to shift and move, to move, shift and move uh, positions for my job to go to and <coughs> And I obey God. I sense the, the leading of God. And as I'm making this move, I get attacked. Coworkers start putting their mouth on me. And I knew they didn't like me from the beginning, but now you're putting your mouth on me. You're trying to clown me. Pride was getting in the way. I started getting in my feelings. I'm talking to you. I'm sharing, I'm sharing my heart. I was getting in my feelings. And the Holy Spirit had to tell me, why are you worried about that? I've already moved you from that. I got the job in the, with the next neighboring county, signed the contract, ready to move, ready for the next chapter. But I was still stuck. I now was getting stuck, getting pulled back into something God had already moved me from. Holy Spirit had to say, listen, you're not even there anymore. Your focus should be different. Let haters hate. Let the devil scream, let him rant, let him rave all he wants to. Keep your focus on God. Your freedom is found in your focus. What you focus on, you give life to. Quit being Captain Obvious, stating what's already there. What do you want to see? There's somebody in, in a marriage right now that's it's not the best marriage. It's, it's not turmoil and chaos. What do you want to see? Well, she not this and he not that. Okay, we see that. What do you want to see? Speak to the man you want to see. Speak to the husband you want to see. Speak to the wife you want to see. Speak to the children you want to see. If they're, if, if they're doing stuff that's that low down, no good, don't, 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 don't promote that. Speak to them. I remember I used to do, I used to do silly stuff childish stuff as a child and my grandmother would say, man of God, I was nine years old. But she still called me man of God. It, it did something to me. I, 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 it stopped me in my tracks every time she said, man of God. I said, didn't know how to act then, but it, 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 it disrupted. It disrupted the current flow. If, if if your spouse, if your partner is not acting like they should, is not honoring the gift of God in you, speak to what you want to see. Father, I thank you that my husband is an honorable man. I thank you that my wife is an honorable woman. I thank you that their love for you will teach them how to love me. I thank you that their honor of you will teach them how to honor me. Speak to what you want to see. Father, I thank you that my children are obedient children. I thank you that they study your word. I thank you that they fall in love with you. Speak to what you want to see, what you focus on, you give life to. Father, I thank you that my bills are paid in time, on time, every time, in the name of Jesus. What you, what you focus on, you give life to. Father God, I thank you for a focus that frees us. I thank you for a focus that releases us from the dens and the dungeons that we currently occupy. I thank you that a renewed focus takes us to the place you intended us to be. In the name of Jesus. Like Daniel, help us to focus on what really matters. 
We may have suffered some defeats. We may have incurred some losses. But show us how to magnify you in this place. Show us how to bring, bring glory to your name in this location. There may be a decree out. There may be some things that have been spoken over our life. The diagnosis may have been seen by the doctor, but we declare healing in the name of Jesus. We won't let the decree take us away from our devotion. And just like Daniel, we're going to focus on the one who's able to deliver and not the disturbance or the danger. Thank you, God. Thank you. That no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Jesus' name. Amen. What you focus on, you give power to. We love you. If you got saved today, let somebody know. Real quick, real quick, real quick. I know, I know this is later than we've been. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for salvation. I pray for those who are at a place right now where they're willing to surrender their heart to you. They're, they're willing, Lord God, to, to forego their plan for your plan. Forgive them of their sin. Cleanse them of unrighteousness. Let, let these words come from their mouth. Pray they confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus. Pray that they believe in their heart that you raised him from the dead. That your blood paid the price for their sin. Let their confession be heard. Let it be received. And let their new life begin. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next week, we love you, but God loves you more. God bless you.